Good morning, dear students. Today we are going to solve October, November 2010, 1-2 paper. It's an MCQ paper. Our course is Physics 5054. Let's start. On your screen, we have question number one, which list contains only scalar quantity. You know, if you look at the lists which are given here, and uh, you will notice that the, in the D option, length, which is a scalar, mass, which is a scalar, speed, which is a scalar. So D is the option. Question number one, D is the option. They all are scalars. On your screen, we have question number two. A small stone is dropped from the top of a ladder, falls and hits the ground. It does not rebound. Which speed time graph is correct? You know, when a small stone will drop and its speed will go on increasing, increasing. And then when it will hit the ground, all of a sudden, immediately the speed will become zero. So the best graph looks the C. For question number two, C is the option. Question number three is on your screen, a car travels along a road. The car travels along a road. The driver stops the car by pushing his foot down on the brake pedal. What does not change? What does not change? If he pushes harder on the brake pedal, you know, when you will push the brake pedal very hard, harder, um, the braking distance will change. Maybe the stopping distance obviously will change, but the thinking distance will not change. Thinking distance is when a driver sees a hindrance on the road, and he, he has some reaction time. And during that reaction time, uh, the car travels some distance. That is called thinking distance. So thinking distance totally depends upon the mental condition of the driver. And the braking distance, obviously, when you will uh, um, push the brakes very hard, the braking distance will be smaller. The stopping distance will also become smaller. You know, the stopping distance is equal to Breaking distance plus the thinking distance. So the breaking distance will change, the break and the stopping distance will change, the breaking force will change, but the thinking distance do not change. So D is the option for question number three. Okay, next question on your screen is question number four. One ear calipers are shown with jaws closed. And if you look at uh, very carefully, let me increase the size. And okay, on your screen, jaws are closed but the vernier is still showing showing some reading it means there is zero error in the vernier caliper so let's see how much is this reading so first of all i check that the zero of the vernier has crossed how much on the main scale so on the main scale this is zero this is one centimeter this is two centimeter from zero to one centimeter it has made 10 division the zero of the vernier has crossed this first division so it has crossed 0.1 centimeter. Now we will check which line on the vernier scale coincides with a line on the main scale. So one, two, three, four. This fourth line is coinciding with another line on the main scale. So the reading will be 0 0.14. 0 0.14 centimeter will be the answer. So C is the choice, 0 0.14 centimeter. For question number four, C is the choice. On your screen, question number five, a student pulls a piece of tape through a ticker tape timer. Every 0 0.02 second, the timer points a dot on the tape. First, the tape is pulled quickly, then slowly, then quickly. You know, if the tape is pulled quickly, the dots, it will make, the machine will the dots the machine will make on the paper, they will away from each other. When the tape is pulled slowly, the dots will be close to each other. And when again the dots, are, uh, when the tape is pulled quickly, the dots will be away from each other. So if you look at the choices, uh, the dots should be away for quick pull and the dots should be closed for slowly when you are pulling slowly and the dots should be away from each other when you are pulling it quickly. So B looks the choice. Okay, on your screen, we have question number four. Let me reduce the size, okay. Okay, an aircraft flying at a constant height is gaining speed. 
the four forces acting are lift due to the wings, air resistance, the thrust due to the engines, and the weight. You know the because the aeroplane is flying at a constant height, so lift and the weight they are equal to each other. So lift and the weight should be equal to each other because the aeroplane is gaining speed, so the thrust is more than the air resistance. So C looks the choice for question number six. C is the choice. Next question on your screen we have is, okay, on your screen, the question number seven. The base of a statue rests on level ground. It is made from stone and is two meter long, 2.5 meter high and 0 0.80 meter wide. It has a weight of 96,000 Newton. What is the pressure that the base exerts on the ground? You know, the, the pressure is equal to the weight of the object divided by its contact area with the ground. The contact area of the statue with the ground, its dimensions are 0 0.8 meter and 2 meter. It's a rectangle. So multiply 0 0.80 with 2 meter and uh, your answer will be 1.6 meter square. To find out the pressure, apply the formula. Pressure is equal to weight divided by area. 96,000 divided by uh, 1.6. And the answer will be 60,000. And 60,000 can be written as 60 K kilopascal. So the choice is D. For question number seven, the choice is D. Okay, on your screen, we have question number eight. What affects the stability of an object? The, the, the base area and the location of its center mass decides the stability of an object. So for question number eight, B is the choice, only its base area and the location of its center of mass. B is the option. Question number nine is on your screen. A person of weight 600 Newton at the bottom of a mountain climbs to the top. The gravitational field strength changes from 10 Newton per kg at the bottom to 9.97 Newton per kg at the top. His mass is unchanged as he climbs. What are his mass and his weight at the top of the mountain? The weight of the bottom of the mountain. So from weight we can calculate the mass. Weight is equal to mg. kg so the mass of the man at the bottom of the mountain is 60 kg now the weight of the man at the bottom of the mountain was 600 newton can be found by the formula w is equal to mg the W is equal to the mass of the man is 60 kg and the value of the G on the top of the mountain is 9.97 Newton per kg. So multiply 9.97 with the uh, with 60 and the answer will be 598 Newton. So on the top of the mountain, the mass of the man will be 60 kg and its uh, weight will be 598 Newton. So A is the option. Question number nine, A is the option. Okay, on your screen, we have question number 10. An engineer designs the dam wall for a reservoir. Which factor determines the pressure at X? You know, at the X, at point X, the pressure of the liquid depends upon the depth of the liquid above the point X. It, the formula for the pressure of the liquid is rho GH. Rho is the density of the water. G is the gravitational field strength. And H is the depth of the water above the point where you are uh, calculating the pressure. So the given option, the depth of the water in the reservoir, yes, A is the choice. For question number 10, A is the choice. Okay. <clears throat> question number 11 is on your screen. A box has an internal volume of 1,000 cubic centimeter. When a solid object is placed in the closed box, the volume of air in the box is 520 cubic centimeter. The density of the object is 8 gram per centimeter cube. What is the mass of the object? First of all, I need to know what is the volume of the solid object. The volume of the solid object can be found by the total volume of the box minus the volume of the air. So it will be 1000 cubic centimeter minus 520 cubic 
centimeter and the answer will be 480 cubic centimeter now i know the volume of the uh, solid object i know the density of the solid object i can find the mass of the solid object the mass of the solid object we use the density formula density is equals to mass divided by volume so mass will be equals to density multiply volume the density is 8 and the volume is 480 multiply 8 and 480 and the answer will be 3840 gram so the choice is b Okay, on your screen, we have question number 12. A uniform meter rule is balanced by a four Newton weight as shown in the diagram. Here we have the pivot. Here we have a four Newton weight. Its distance from the pivot is 10 centimeter. Here we have the center of the gravity of the rule. Its weight is acting here. It is at, the, at a mark of 50 centimeter. The pivot is at the mark of 10 centimeter. So the distance between the weight of the rule the center of the mass or the center of the gravity of the rule and the pivot is 40 centimeter. This weight is trying to produce a counterclockwise turning effect or we call it anti-clockwise moment. And this weight is trying to produce, uh, the weight of the rule is trying to produce a clockwise turning effect because they both are uh, equal to each other because uh, the rule is in equilibrium. So they both clockwise and anti-clockwise moment, they are equal to each other. So, you know, the moment is weight multiply its perpendicular distance from the pivot. So the weight into 40 equals to four Newton multiply 10. So weight will be equals to 40 divided by 40 and the answer will be one Newton. So for question number 12A is the option, one Newton. Okay, question number 13 is on your screen. The tubes inside solar heating panels use the sun's radiation to warm water. Why are the tubes painted black? Because black color, you know, is a very good absorber of infrared radiation. So that's why we paint them black, so they can absorb radiation well. So question number 13, black surfaces absorb radiation well. This is the answer. Question number 13, A is the answer. On your screen, a liquid evaporates rapidly. Why? Question number 14 on your screen. A liquid evaporates rapidly. Why does this cause it to cool? Because when evaporation happens, the molecules with most energetic energy, they leave the surface of the liquid and the, the molecules which are left in the liquid, they have low energy. They have low kinetic energy. The average kinetic energy of that liquid drops. And due to this, the temperature drops. So for question number 14, the best answer is C, some of the most energetic molecules leave the liquid. For question number 14, C is the option. Okay, on your screen we have question number, let me reduce the size. Question number 15 is on your screen, a hot liquid is poured into a beaker. The graph shows how the temperature changes at, as it cools towards room temperature. So we have a hot liquid and this is a cooling curve given to you. The temperature is dropping, 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 and the temperature curve or the cooling curve becomes flat. When the cooling curves become flat, it means that the state is changing. So when the state is changing, it was a hot liquid. So when the state is changing, it is converting into solid. So it's solidif the process of solidification is taking place. So D is the option, solidification and evaporation is happening at point X. Question number 15, D is the option. Question number 16, uh, what is caused by the thermal expansion of a substance when heated? When you will heat uh, a substance, the molecule of that, th that substance will move away from each other. The density of that thing should decrease. The best answer given here is D option, the upward movement of the air above a Bunsen burner when it is lit. You know, when the air which is above the Bunsen burner, that air is heated, the molecule of that air move away from each other. The density of the air decreases, and due to decrease in the density, uh, that air starts rising upward. So D is the option. Question number 17 is on your screen. The diagram shows a clinical thermometer. Which factors affect the sensitivity of the thermometer? The sensitivity of the thermometer depends upon the diameter of the bore, and it depends upon how much mercury you have put in. So B is the choice, the diameter of the bore. It's a famous question. 
Question number 18 is on your screen. The energy outputs of a generator depend upon its efficiency and energy input. And uh, which set values is correct? Okay, here there are four sets given and energy input and energy output is given. The efficiency is equal to energy output divided by energy input. For every set of given values, calculate the efficiency for yourself and then check whether the answer he gave is correct or not. So for the first, uh, for the first portion, for the A option, energy output but energy input 25 divided by 50, the answer will be 0 0.2, but he gave the answer 0 0.1, so A is wrong. For B, the output is 6 and the input is 30, so divide them. 6 divided by 30 and answer will be 0 0.2. He also gave the 0 0.2 efficiency, so this is the right choice. For question number 18, B is the right choice. Okay, question number 19 is on your screen. When one radium nucleus decays, its mass decreases by 8.8 .8 expo minus 30 kg. How much energy is equivalent to this loss in mass? Speed of the light is C equals to 3 expo 8 meter per second. You remember that uh, Newton's, uh, sorry, Einstein's equation, E is equals to mc square. The mass can be converted into energy and energy can be converted into mass. They are related with each other with this equation E equal mc square. E is the energy, m is the mass, c is the speed of light, and the, on the speed of light we have a square. E equal mc square. Just put the values. So we will have E equals to mc square. It will be 8.8 .8 into 10 raised to power uh, minus 30 multiplied with bracket start 3.0 expo 8 bracket close square and the answer will be 2.6 into 10 raised to power minus 21 joules so the answer is b <clears throat> question number 19 the answer is b question number 20 is on your screen the diagram shows a curved track a ball is released from the position shown at which point does the ball have the maximum gravitational potential energy gravitational potential energy will be maximum where the ball has the maximum height. So at the point A, the ball has the maximum height from the ground. So that's why we will say at point A, the ball will have the maximum gravitational potential energy for question number 20, A is the option. Okay, question number 21, during a thunderstorm, there is an interval of 1.70 second between an observer seeing the lightning and hearing the thunder. The speed of sound is 340 meter per second. What is the distance between the observer and the storm? You know, uh, the distance can be found by speed multiply time, 340 meter per second, multiply 1.70 second, and the answer, and the answer will be 578 meter. So C is the choice. Question number 22 is on your screen. Which pair of emission emissions travel with the same speed in air? Alpha particles and a gamma rays, no gamma rays and infrared rays. Yes, this is the answer because both gamma rays and infrared waves, they are electromagnetic uh, waves and they are both transverse waves and they both travel with the sp same speed in the air. This is the property of electromagnetic waves. So B is the answer, gamma rays and infrared rays because both of, the, both of them are electromagnetic waves. So they will travel with the same speed in the air. B is the choice. Question number 22, B is the choice. On your screen, we have question number 23. A ray of light strikes the surface of a glass block at an angle of incidence 45 degree. The refractive index of the glass is 1.5. What is the angle of refraction inside the block? You remember the Snell's law. N is equal to sine I by sine R, where N is the refractive index. Sine I is the sine of the angle of incidence. And uh, sine R is the sine of the angle of refraction. So if you write that formula, uh, n is equal to sine i by sine uh, r, 1.5 equals to sine 45 divided by sine r. And from there, you can find the value of the r. And the answer will be, and the answer will be 28. A is the option. You can do this calculation on a scientific calculator yourself. And please learn to do this. Okay, question number 24 is on your screen. And an object is viewed through a concave diverging lens. 
what is the correct description of the image form you know uh, in our course there is only one image formation by a diverging lens and that because the diverging lens lens is always we call the diverging lens concave lenses the concave lenses of the diverging lenses they always form virtual upright diminished images virtual upright diminished images are always formed by the by the concave lenses so d is the option question number 24 d is the option okay on your screen we have question number 25 in an experiment in an experiment using a ripple tank plane where fronts arrive at a plane surface which row correctly describes the waves after they are reflected from the surface you know in the reflection the direction of the waves will change the wavelength will not change the speed will not change and the frequency will not change so the speed of waves will be the same the wavelength of the waves will be the same d is the option this is we are talking about reflection of the wave fronts question number 26 is on your screen many electrical appliances have metal cases to prevent the case from becoming live with the possibility of an electric shock the earth wire of the electric cable is attached to the case how does the earth wire prevent electric shock when you have connected a earth wire to the casing what happens if god forbids if 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 in in case the case of the machinery becomes in contact with the live so what will happen the live current will start flowing into the case so it can be very dangerous so what we do we connect the earth wire with the casing so what that earth wire do it takes the current from from the casing and take the current to the ground so when a person will touch he will be safe because the resistance of the earth wire is less than the resistance of the human body another good thing the earth wire do when it takes current to the ground if the casing of the machine becomes live when it takes current to the ground now the current is being it is going to two places one it is going to the machinery of the appliance and the second it is going into the ground so the current coming from the main supply will increase if you have installed a fuse in the in the live wire when the current will go to the two places ground and the machine because the current coming from the main supply will increase due to that increased or the surge of the current going to the machine it will cross the limit of the fuse and the fuse will blow and it will melt it will cut off the supply of the current to okay so it allows a large current to flow to earth blowing the fuse the b is the answer question number 26 b is the option question number 27 is on your screen a metal ring screens a piece of equipment from a magnetic field this is magnetic screening and if you have some sensitive instruments we always put them inside that metal ring that metal ring is always made of uh, sorry the metal ring is always made of iron because the magnetic lines will flow in the ring and i mean they cannot come inside the ring they flow in the iron and from the other side they get out so they go, go out and so the they cannot come inside the ring so see the choice iron the metal carries the metal lines around the equipment so your equipment is safe so see is the choice question number 27 okay on your screen we have question number 28 the diagram shows a simple electric circuit which row describes the charge on an electron and the direction of electron flow through the resistor okay the electron the charge on the electron is negative and the flow of the electrons will be from the negative to the positive you know the conventional current that flows from the positive to negative but he has not asked about the conventional current he is asking what will be the direction of the electron flow the direction of the electron flow will be from negative to positive so the charge on electron is negative and the direction of the electron flow is from negative to positive so for question number 28 a is the choice okay we have here here on your screen we have question number 29 a negatively charged sphere x is brought up to an identical uncharged sphere y and the spheres do not uh, do not touch sphere y is earth by touching it with the finger which is then removed sphere x is then removed away from sphere y what is the final charge you know when you will bring this negatively charged near it 
this side will become positive and this side will become negative so when you will touch it with your finger the electrons here they will go to the ground and this side will become neutral but this side will be still positive so when you will break the earth and then you will move it away you will come to know that we have lost many electrons so this whole y thing will become positively charged so it looks 29 looks b is the option i hope you have understood this story question number 30 is on your screen let me increase the size okay question number 30 is on your on your screen a battery is used to light a 24 watt electric lamp the battery provides a charge of 120 coulomb in 60 seconds what is the potential difference across the lamp okay so the charge is given 120 coulomb and the time is given 60 second so you know the current is equals to q divided by t the current is equals to charge divided by time and the 120 coulomb divided by 60 second and the answer will be 2 amps so the current is 2 amps the power is given 24 watt you know the formula for power is power equal iv the power is given 24 watt and uh, the i we know is 2 amps so i can calculate the value of the v v will be equals to p divided by i and it will be 24 watt divided by 2 amp and the answer will be 12 volt so b is the option b is the option okay on your screen we have question number 31 when three identical resistors are connected in series their combined resistance is 6 ohm what is their combined resistance when they are connected in parallel okay so when they were connected in series the total resistance here was 6 ohm so it was x it was x it was x 3x is equal to 6 ohm so the value of the x will be 6 divided by 3 so it means one resistor is of 2 ohm so then what i did i connected them in parallel so each resistor here is 2 ohm so i connected those 2 ohm resistors in parallel to each other so now i can find their equivalent resistance and you know when the resistors are connected in parallel to each other we can find their equivalent resistors by the formula 1 by r equivalent is equals to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 1 by r equivalent is equals to 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 1 by r equivalent will be equals to 3 by 2 do the cross multiplication and the r will be equals to 2 by 3 so b is the option i hope you have understood it question number 32 is on your screen the diagram shows a beam of electrons entering a magnetic field the direction of the magnetic field is downward towards the bottom of the page okay the diagram shows a beam of electrons entering a magnetic field the direction of the magnetic field is downward towards the bottom of the page you can see on your paper that the electrons are entering from the right side the direction of the magnetic field is uh, towards the bottom of the page so we can apply the in which direction does the deflection of the electron occurs so we can apply the left hand rule you know left hand rule take your left hand left hand okay so stretch your fingers in this way these three fingers the thumb the index finger and the middle finger fmc fmc force magnetic field current so what will happen the magnetic field is downward the electrons are going this way my thumb points uh, out of the paper so i applied the left hand rule to find the direction of deflection of the electrons but you know this left hand rule is not applicable or this is not uh, about negative charges so if your left hand rule is saying they will be coming out of the page the electrons will be going into the page because the left hand rule is talking about the positive charge but here we are talking about the negative charge so it should be deflected into the page so for 32 a is the option i hope you have understood question number 33 is on your screen electric power cables transmit electric energy over large distances using a high voltage alternating current what are the advantages of using a high voltage and of using an alternating current the high voltage is used because when you use high voltage the amount of current decreases this reduces the energy loss in the transmission lines so less energy is wasted in the cables transmission lines when it is transmitted at high voltage 
the why we use alternating current because the transformers which are used to step up or step down the voltage they work on the alternating current so d is the option question number 33 d is the option less energy is wasted in the cable the voltage can be changed using a transformer question number 34 is on your screen what does not alter the size of the turning effect on the coil of an electric motor the direction of the current in the coil it do not change the size of the turning effect the number of turns in the coil that's this affects the size of the turning effect the size of the current in the coil it affects the strength of the magnet it also affects strength of the magnetic field affects so the first uh, the direction of the current in the coil it does not affect the size of the turning effect for 34a is the choice so on your screen we have question number 35 let me reduce and <clears throat> the diagram shows an alarm system in which the switch s is shown closed so you see when this switch is closed the current is coming to this coil this coil becomes magnetic electromagnet this electromagnetic uh, due to its magnetic force it keeps this iron in the air if you close if you open this switch this will lose its magnetism and under the weight of iron because there will be no more uh, magnetic field available to lift it so this iron will drop when this iron will drop and touch with this metal the path of the current in this second circuit will be completed and the bell will start ringing so say he says what happens when the switch as is opened the the iron will drop and the bell will ring so a is the choice question number 35 a is the choice okay two parallel question number 36 is on your screen two parallel vertical wires p and q are a small distance apart in air there is a downward electric current in both the wires a force acts on q owing to the current in p this force is perpendicular to the wire q what is the direction of the force you know if you have two parallel conductors and the direction of the current in both of them is same they will attract each other so if p and q are attracting each other so the force on the q applied by the p should be towards p so d is the choice Question number thirty-seven is on your screen. The diagram shows an AC generator connected to an electric circuit load resistor. Which statement is correct? The direction of the potential difference across the load resistor is always the same. That's not. Uh, that's not true, because you know we have connected here the slip rings. Alternating current is uh, produced in, by this generator, so A is wrong. The size of the induced EMF depends on the number of turns in the coil. That is true. the size of the inducing mf does not change as the coil turns that is wrong the winding the coil on a soft iron cylinder makes no difference it's wrong so <clears throat> the size of the inducing mf depends on the number of turns in the coil just b is, b looks the answer for question number 37 b is the option on your screen we have question number 38 <clears throat> The table shows details of two samples of radioactive nucleide X and Y. Okay, number of radioactive atoms at the time zero ha half life is one day, and the uh, the sample Y, its number of atoms are two thousand and the half life is two days. After how many days will the number of atoms of nucleide X be equal to the number of atoms of the nucleide Y? Let me show you. I have done this working also. Let me show you my work. And uh, 2010, 12. I've done this on a paper. Let me show you my work. Okay, okay, on your screen. Can you see that? Yeah, this question thirty-eight. Here I have drawn a timeline. Zero day, one day, two day, three day, four day, five day, six day, seven day, eighth day, ninth day. Here is sample X. The half life of the sample X is one day. So after every one day, its uh, initial or its original atoms they decay and they, they, the original ones are left. How much half? So at the zero day, it was sixteen hundred, so sixteen thousand. After one day, it became eight thousand. After two days, it became four thousand. So it's Becoming half, 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 half. Two thousand, one thousand, five hundred, 
250, 125. Okay. The sample Y on this, on the right side I've drawn, I have done the work for sample Y. Its half-life is two days. So after every two days, its value has. So 2,000 after two days, it becomes 1,000. After two days, it becomes 500. After two days, it becomes 250. So you know, on the sixth day, on the sixth day, the number of atoms of the X and number of atoms of the, of the Y, they are same. So this happened on which day? Sixth day. I hope this is a little tricky. I hope you understand this. Sixth day, C is the option. Okay, question number 39 is on your screen. A student investigates a radioactive source that emits only alpha particles. Without any source nearby, the detector shows a low reading. The source and thick cardboard are placed near the detector as shown. What is the reading on the detector now and why? Detector reading reason, you know, the alpha particles, they cannot penetrate through the you know, this uh, cardboard. So that's why the reading will drop to the background radiation. The detector reading will be low. And uh, some alpha particle. <clears throat> the reason is the background radiation is only detected. So I think the A is the choice. For question number 39, A is the choice. The rest of the choices are wrong. Question number 30, uh, 40 is on your screen. He says... Uh, N715 is a nucleide of nitrogen. How many electrons are there in a neutral atom of N715? How many new, how many electrons are there? Number of electrons are equal to number of protons. This proton number is seven. So number of electrons will be seven. So A is the choice. For question number 40, A is the choice. I hope, dear students, you have understood this uh, paper. This was... Uh, this was uh, <clears throat> October, November 2010, 1-2 paper, Physics 5054. I did my best to explain the concepts. I, I hope that I am to some help to you. Thank you very much, everybody. And have a good day. Thank you very much. And God bless you all. Bye-bye.